Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my up for simple snippets. Back with another video tutorial on quantitative aptitude. Now, in this video tutorial, we'll be covering up the topic of problems on percentage. In the previous couple of video tutorials, we saw different topics in quantitative aptitude such as partnership problems, time distance speed, simple interest, compound interest, and many others that we have covered in this playlist itself. So if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel because then you'll get notified when I upload more video tutorials on quantitative aptitude and cover more different topics. So with that being said, let's get started with today's topic. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we have certain concepts and formulas based on problems on percentage. So before we actually get on with the numerical solving, we'll first try to understand these formulas and I would recommend you to note down these formulas because this will make your calculations very easy. So let me just read out the first point that is concept of percentage. So what does a percent mean? So this is what they have stated over here. So by a certain percent, we mean that many hundreds of that part, which means that if we have X percent, so mathematically X percent is equal to X by 100. So 20% would be 20 upon 100 which is one fifth of the part. So if you have rupees 500, 20% of that would be one fifth of 500 which is one fifth into 500 that would give you 100 rupees. So mathematically this is how you represent percentage. Again to express a fraction which is a by b as percent, we simply have to multiply it by 100. So for example one fourth is a fraction. So to represent it in percentage we can simply multiply it by 100 which is 25%. So this is how fraction can be represented in percent and percent can be represented in terms of a fraction. Let's move on to point number two. Now point number two gives us a formula which can be used to calculate percentage increase and decrease. So let me just read out the point. If the price of a commodity increases by R percent, then the reduction in consumption so as to not increase the expenditure is given by R upon 100 plus R into 100 percent. And similarly we have if the price of a commodity decreases by R percent then the increase in consumption so as to not decrease the expenditure is given by R upon 100 minus R into 100 percent. Now this this formula is used when there is a relation between price of a commodity and its consumption. So to understand it more properly we will take an example. So okay as you can see let's assume that cost of 1 kg of tomato is rupees 100 and there is a 50% increase. So there is some inflation and some problems going on because of which the cost of 1 kg of tomato has increased 50%. Now 50% 50 of 100 is 50 rupees which means that new cost of 1 kg of tomato is now 150 rupees. Now suppose a family has an initial consumption or budget of 300 rupees which means that it can only spend 300 rupees monthly for tomatoes. So initially when the cost of of 1 kg of tomato was 100 rupees they could buy 3 kg but now since the new price has risen by 50 percent the new cost is 150 which means that now they can only buy 2 kg so initially it was 3 kg now they can only buy 2 kg because their budget is 300 that is not going to change so you can see that there is 1 1 kg reduced so this is the decrease now to calculate percentage that is reduced that is decreased percent the formula goes by the actual value or the initial consumption value minus the new consumption value which is 1 so 3 minus 2 so 3 kg was being purchased initially after the price was hiked only 2 kg was purchased so the difference is 1 divided by the original value that is 3 kg into 100 so this is going to give 33.33 percent so this is the percent decrease now again this is when we actually calculate it manually that there is 33 percent decrease in the consumption to keep the price constant now we have a direct formula so let's try to apply this formula which is percent increase or decrease in this case there is a reduction in consumption so we have to use this formula r upon 100 plus r into 100 so we know that the cost of tomatoes increased 50 percent so we can directly substitute that in the formula which is then going to be 50 upon 100 plus 50 which is 150 into 100 percent so that would give 50 upon 100 plus 50 which is 150 into 100 which is again 33.33 percent so this is how we can directly use the formula to calculate the percent reduction in the consumption or percent increase in the consumption when the point number two is valid so we just proved this formula and and similarly we can also go ahead and prove this part so let me just read this part if the price of a commodity decreases by r percent then the increase in consumption so as to not decrease the expenditure is r upon 100 minus r into into 100 percent so this is just the opposite case of the first one which we just saw 
So let's move on to point number three that is results on population. So let the population of a town be P which is in current time. So P is like present population and suppose it increases at the rate of R percent per annum which means it is increasing by R percent every year. So the population after n years is given by this formula which is P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to n. Now this is similar to the formula of compound interest if you have seen that video tutorial and if you haven't I'll put a link in the description or you can also see a pop-up card over here so you can go check that out if you have missed those video tutorials. Similarly, the population n years ago that is in the past the population can be calculated by p upon 1 plus r by 100 raised to n. So in this case there was multiplication in this case there is division going on. Now let's see another formula which is for results on depreciation. So when you buy a product or a machine or any tool after a certain time the value decreases. For example if you buy a car and after two years you want to sell it you won't be able to sell it at the same price right. The price is going to go down because it is considered as second hand or third hand and so on. So that is called the depreciation value. So let the present value of a machine be P. Suppose it depreciates at the rate of R percent per annum then value of the machine after n years is going to be P into 1 minus R by 100 raised to n. Now we are not going to get into how this formulas were derived because we are directly going to use it in our aptitude problems which will be coming up next. So you just make a note of these formulas because then this will give you the direct answers. And also we won't be using all of these formulas because we are only going to solve like five questions but these are the most important ones in terms of this topic that is percentages. Then moving on to the second point which is value of the machine n years ago in the past can be given as p upon 1 minus r by 100 raised to n. And then lastly we have two different points which is if a is r percent more than b then b is r upon 100 plus r into 100 less than a. So these are again direct formulas which we don't need to go into the actual derivation you can just make a note of it so that you can directly calculate the values and it would speed up your calculation during the aptitude solving. Similarly if a is r percent less than b then b is more than a by r upon 100 minus r into 100 and this is again in percentage. Okay so these were the six different important points as well as formulas and concepts related to percentage. So now let's move ahead with the first question. Okay, so let me just read out question number one. A batsman scored 110 runs which included three boundaries and eight sixes. What percentage of his total score did he make by running be between the wickets? Okay, so we've been given certain data that total runs is equal to 110 but it comprises of three boundaries and eight sixes. Now in the question what they are asking is what percentage of his total score did he make by running between the wickets which means that excluding these three boundaries and eight sixes what was the percentage of his total score. So the first thing that we need to find out is the runs between the wickets and that is going to be 110 minus 3 into 4 plus 8 into 6. So this would give us the value of 110 minus 60 which is going to be 50 runs. So they are asking the percentage which means that what percent of his total score did he make by running between the wickets. Now we know the total score that he ran between the wickets is 50. So what they are asking is 50 is what percent of 110. So in order to calculate that we would say 50 upon the total score into 100. So this is how we get the percentage. So just now cancelling out the values. So this would be 500 upon 11 and since we do not have anything in the options like 500 by 11 we have to convert this into a mixed fraction and this would ultimately give us 45 5 by 11 percent and I hope you know how to convert a normal fraction into a mixed fraction you just go ahead and divide 500 by 11 so we have 11 fours are 44 then we'll get 6 0 comes down then we have 5 are 55 and we have a remainder now and we cannot further divide this so the quotient comes in this whole place this remainder is becomes a new numerator and this divisor is going to be the denominator so this is how you convert a normal fraction into a mixed fraction in case you didn't know. So option B is going to be our final answer. So this was a pretty simple question wherein we simply had to find out what percentage of some runs is of 110 and the only catch here was we had to subtract three boundaries and eight sixes out of the total runs. So let's move on to question number two now. Okay so let me just read out the question. Two students appeared at an examination. One of them secured nine marks more than the other and his marks was 56 percent of the sum of their marks. So the marks obtained by them are. So let me just first take this out on the new line. Okay so it was going outside the blackboard so black screen so I just cut it and paste it over here. So this is starting 
starting from over here so let me just read it out again two students appeared at an examination one of them secures nine marks more than the other and his marks was 56 percent of the sum of their marks so the marks obtained by them are and we have some options the a b c d which is 39 30 41 32 42 33 and 43 34 okay so we do not have the actual marks but we know the relation between their marks and we also know what percentage it was so let's start the solution with certain assumptions so we'll say let marks be x for person 1 so so this is student 1 so marks of student 2 is equal to x plus 9 because one of them secured 9 marks more so if s1 is scoring x marks s2 will score x plus 9 marks so we know this relation right and they're saying that his marks was 56 percent now this his is the one who has the higher marks was 56 percent of the sum of their marks so they have given this statement so let's try to represent it mathematically so they're saying his marks which is x plus 9 so x plus 9 was 56 percent of the sum of their marks so this is equal to 56 percent of the sum of their marks now the sum of their marks is going to be x which is for s1 and x plus 9 which is for s2 so x plus x plus 9 so mathematically this equation is what we wanted to actually find out and now we can simply go ahead and simplify this so x plus 9 is equal to 56 percent is represented in fractional format as 56 upon 100 into x plus x can give us 2x plus 9 now again we can simply go ahead and further simplify it because we just need to find out the value of x and only one variable is supposed to be found out so moving ahead so this would give us 25 x plus 9 is equal to 14 2x plus 9 so what i did is i just divided this by 2 and cancelled it out and transferred this 100 which was cancelled later to over there so 2 4s are 4 and then we have 2 8s are then this is 50 then 25 and 14 so this is how we came to this equation and ultimately solving this we would be getting 3x is equal to 99 so x is going to be 33 so we got marks for student 1 which is 33 so student 2 would be 33 plus 9 which is going to be 42 so in the options you can see option number c 42 and 33 are the marks so this is going to be our final answer okay so let's move on to question number 3 now so let me just read out this problem a fruit seller had some apples he sells 40 apples and still has 420 apples originally he had okay so a fruit seller has some apples we don't know how many of them so let's assume this as x now he's selling 40 percent of those apples and he still has 420 apples so originally what was the count is what is asked in this question so when he sells 40 percent of his apples he will have 60 percent remaining because that's that's the amount of or that is the percent that will be remaining with him and that would be 420 because when he sells 40 percent so percentage is always counted on 100 so 100 minus 40 would give us 60 percent is what is remaining with him and 60 percent of what is this sum apples which we have assumed as x so let total apples be x so this is what we've assumed so after selling 40 percent of x he's remaining with 60 percent of x which is equal to 420 is what we've been given so 60 percent of x is equal to 420 apples is what we have so in fractional format we can say 60 upon 100 x is equal to 420 so x is equal to 420 in 200 upon 60 so just simplifying this we get x as 700 and this x again is the sum apples or the total apples which we have assumed as x so option d is going to be the final answer so the trick part here was to just to formulate this relation or to understand that after selling 40 percent apples he has 60 percent left and the value of 60 percent apples is given as 420 so let's move on to question number four now Okay, so let me just read out the question number 4. So what percentage of numbers from 1 to 70 have 1 or 9 in its units place? So let us first try to jot down what all things they have given. We know that the total numbers are from 1 to 70 which is equal to 70 numbers. So we have total 70 numbers. But what they are asking is they want the percentage of numbers who have 1 or 9 in its units place. So let's try to find that out. So from 1 to 10, we know that number 1 and number 9 is going to have 1 in its units place. So these are two numbers from 11 to 20 we can see that 11 has 1 in its units place and there would be 19 who would have 9 in its units place so again two numbers and similarly like this from 21 
to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60 and 61 to 70. Each of these case we would have two numbers wherein one number would have one in its units place and the another one would have nine in its units place. So in every 10, after every 10 digits or every 10 numbers, we'll get two numbers who would have one or nine in its units place. So this would ultimately give us a total of 14 numbers. So now we need to calculate the percentage. So to calculate the percentage, we have the numbers who have one or nine and we have the total numbers, which is 70. So we just need to multiply it by 100. So just cancelling this out, percentage is going to be 20%. So option C is going to be our final answer. Okay, so let's move on to the last problem of the day. So let me just read out the question. If 20% of A is equal to B, then B% percent of 20 is same as and we have certain options given here. So let's first try to mathematically write down what all they have given. We know that 20% of A is equal to B, which means that 20 upon 100 into A is equal to B. So what they are asking is what is B% percent of 20? So B% percent of 20 would be B upon 100 into 20. So now what we can do is we have reached till B upon 100 into 20. Now we know that B value is equal to A into 20 by 100. So instead of this B, we can substitute this value. So what we'll do is we'll try to substitute that. So 20 upon 100, the whole upon this 100 into 20. And we missed a A over here. So this is A. So this would ultimately give us 20 A upon 100 into 1 upon 100 into 20. So when we actually go ahead and solve this and cancel out all the zeros, we will be remaining with 4 upon 100 A, which is equal to if we convert this fractional value into percentage 4 by 100 is going to be 4 percent of a so let's see the options we have a b c d so you can see that a is the correct option which is 4 percent of a so from this relation we got to a value of b and then when they had given us b percent of 20 which is this we substituted the value for b which we had got which is 20 a upon 100 and then we came to a new relation that is 4 percent of a so this question was small but it was little tricky but now you know how to solve this okay so that's it for this video guys I hope you understood the different problems on percentage and we also saw important formulas and important concepts on percentage so make a note of them and if you have any queries or comments you can always let me know in the comment section and if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Peace.